Everyone should wake up on Christmas morning with Greco Fabulous under their tree. All right, I gotta make this fast because I just unplugged the water filter in our aquarium so I can cut down on the background noise. And if this video runs too long, then I'm gonna have to explain to my daughter why the fishies are all sleeping. Hey everybody, Greco Fabulous here and welcome to what should have been a very festive ho 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 edition of Craigslist Flipping. But because of my recent encounters on Craigslist, I've learned one cold hard fact. Everyone on Craigslist sucks. Now, if you're a fan of this series, you already know about my recent comic book debacle, where I was basically teased with a ton of key issues for dirt cheap. Hell, I was even invited to the woman's house for a private shopping event. But when I got there, all the books I wanted were already gone, and she had the nerve to say, oh, you should have came sooner, when I arrived exactly when she told me to. What was I supposed to do, break into her house? All right, so that was like two months ago, so obviously I'm getting over it. But a week later, I found another Craigslist ad, which should have been my rebound chick. We had a guy offering G1 Transformers, we're talking two Dinobots, Sludge and Swoop, one of them with the box, and Perceptor, who was the Autobot that turns into a microscope. All of that, for the lovely price of $15. So I email him, he tells me to call him in the morning, I give him a ring, we have a nice conversation, he gives me his address, and we make plans to meet on the weekend. And that was that. I was like, oh man, this is, this is the heavens aligning to show me that, you know, sorry we wronged you, but we're making up for it. Then, two days later, he emails me and says, hey, sold those Transformers, sorry. At this point, I was like beside myself. I was like, maybe he thought I was somebody else. So I emailed him back. I was like, hey, just want to make sure you weren't confusing me with somebody else because we had a deal and I think it would be really crappy if you backed out on it. Let me know. And he writes back, yeah, sorry. You know, you seem like a pretty serious buyer, but I've been screwed over too much on Craigslist. And plus the guy that bought it also bought some G.I. Joes and some Hot Wheels. Yeah, because he definitely wasn't going to buy the G.I. Joes and the Hot Wheels if he couldn't have the Transformers too. So at this point, I just let him have it. I was like, okay, I completely understand the need for you to cover your back, but I'm pretty sure I proved that I was a serious buyer when I emailed you, called you, gave you my phone number, and then you in turn gave me your address. So if you're really concerned about Craigslist people, here's a helpful hint. Don't give somebody your address and then piss them off. Probably want to avoid that. And then on top of that, I was like, you know, for someone that's so concerned about Craigslist people not keeping their word, you should probably practice what you preach. So at that point, I was just ready to give Craigslist up because after that, I answered another Craigslist ad for a video game that I wanted. The guy was asking 20 bucks, I offered him 12, and then he wrote back, F no. And that's a censored version. And I was just like, how rude, you know? Like, if you don't want to negotiate, that's one thing. But again, this is Craigslist, you should probably be expecting it. But at least have some, like, just tact, you know, just be like, oh, you know, sorry, you know, I'm really looking for full price or, you know, I'm not really interested in selling it. Thank you for your interest. But no, to write back F no, that's just so rude. So I in turn wrote back, excuse me, little boy, is there an adult I can speak to? Which set him off and he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I could kick your ass unless you're a girl. And at that point, I'm glad that he threw that in because it actually kind of diffused the situation. I was like, oh, that's actually pretty funny. So, um, Basically, moral of the story, I need to just take a step back and chill out with Craigslist because I'm going to end up getting hurt out there. So anyways, the next day after all of this went down, a friend of mine texts me and says, Hey, do you have a sludge? So I knew immediately. I called him and said, Did you get that off Craigslist? And lo and behold, he was the one that stole those Transformers from me. So I'm actually glad that it happened that way because number one, it, it just allowed me to laugh at the whole situation. And then number two, I was actually able to work out a deal with my friend so that I didn't end up completely empty handed. So it's not as good as all of that stuff for 15 bucks, but for $15, I did end up getting the sludge action figure, which I did not have. This is my very first Dinobot. 
He's in really good shape and he loves his new home, Rawr. And I don't have it yet, but I, it sounds like I'm actually gonna get the Perceptor figure too from my friend. So, um, almost got everything back. So there you go, Mr. Craigslist. Just goes to show you what a phony you are. You know, the least you could have done was got a higher price, not just, you know, sell it for the same thing because you wanna be a liar. If you didn't wanna hold it for me until the weekend, just say so and I would have ran up there. You know, it's just, ugh, anyways. So on top of that, the one guy on Craigslist that has never failed me is my arcade marquee guy. Now I picked up a few more of these and these are ones that I already have, but I've been able to flip them for money which has helped me to kind of prolong this hobby and save up for bigger adventures. And the biggest adventure that I have coming up is that I am going to be going to Motor City Comic Con in Detroit in May. Uh, thanks in large part to Scott running with comics. Um, he's pretty much housing me. He's he's going to be picking me up and dropping me off at the airport at like ungodly hours of the day and night. So I am forever indebted to him. Um, he's going to be feeding me. I mean, we, well, we haven't worked out all the details, but I mean, it's... I'm his guest, he has to feed me, right? And then, you know, Scott, if you're watching this, I just wanna let you know that I like my baths at like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you can kind of work on your technique, make sure all your, your plumbing and piping is in order before I arrive, that would be really awesome. So anyways, I picked up a few more marquees that are going right on eBay to kind of fund that trip. So I got this Donkey Kong 3 which I already got one from him. I didn't know he had another one, so I'm really happy to get this, and I think this will be an easy sell. Uh, the Popeye marquees have been selling like crazy, so I picked up a few more of those, actually. Uh, it's, a, it's a little opaque because it still has a protective sleeve on it, so these will be an easy sell. And then one that I actually literally just sold today, and it was another really cool one that I didn't know he had an extra of, was this Dig Dug. Made of glass, so this is heavy duty. And I literally just sold this and pretty much made my money back for what I paid for all of those. So everything else going forward is just gonna be pure profit. Then uh, a couple weeks ago, I celebrated my 30th birthday. And uh, I know what you're thinking, how can you look so good at the age of 30? And uh, the simple answer is you can't. You can't, only I can. So a lot of people wanted to, to join me in this celebration and they did the right thing and they bought me stuff. So my wife, who is phenomenal, got me a 100% complete G1 Optimus Prime figure. So here he is in his robot form. And I'm not gonna show you all of it, but I also got his trailer. And you're just gonna have to take my word for that inside there's roller, his combat deck, and even the, like, the gas nozzle and fuel pump and rubber tires y'all so phenomenal and then in addition to that my wife always gets me a, a little mini gift that she says are from the kids uh, and I guess that's our, our little version of Santa Claus because I'm smart enough to know that they're not really from the kids okay I don't think my two-year-old and my seven-month-old are going out shopping for dad okay but I'll play along so anyways as part of their mini theme she got me this little uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Donatello figure from Kid Robot and these are kind of like along the Mighty Mug kind of line um, you know they come in in uh, unmarked boxes and it's a random grab you don't really know what's inside um, they have some really cool figures in addition to the turtles they have the Foot Clan, the Shredder, Krang, Rocksteady, Bebop, all that stuff so this is a cool little nice figure that I, I like to you know they're fun little knickknacks stocking stuffers that you know bring me a lot of joy and then my friend really came through um, and bought something just ridiculous that he probably spent too much money on. And that was this Voltron Defender of the Universe Blazing Sword figure. Uh, I did some research because I didn't really know much about this. Uh, but apparently this was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive back in 2011. So really cool figure uh, you can like he's fully posable can recreate some of his famous battle moves and one of the coolest features is this little button right here from days of long ago from uncharted regions of the universe comes a legend the legend 
Did you like my bad English dubbing just then? Uh, one of the really cool parts of this was that was the original narrator that you heard in the beginning who was voiced by Peter Cullen. And that's the guy, that, that's Optimus Prime. So, I mean, the world basically revolves around Transformers. My world, anyways. So, um, by the way, how, how many of you Transformers fan is this like bringing back childhood memories uh, about like opening, you know, waking up on Christmas morning and, and opening up these guys for the first time under the Christmas tree. Um, I mean, I feel like that's the feeling that all of us collectors are, are chasing again, just trying to, trying to get that back. You know, this is why we do this sort of thing. So I think it's very uh, uh, spot on as far as like the backdrop that I'm showing you this. And then on top of that, I bought a little something for myself. Um, nothing too crazy. Uh, not really like for my birthday, but my comic book shop was having a sale and I usually try to pick up a wall comic while I'm out there, but they, um, they didn't really have anything special. So I picked up some back issues and I'm just trying to complete the Batman Hush storyline. So I picked up some variant covers that I didn't have. This is issue 619. This is known as the villains cover. Priced at 275, but it was half off. And then another 619, which is a second printing, and this is a, a Riddler cover. Priced at five, so I got that for 250. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I mean, after all that amazing stuff, I'm definitely level-headed with my whole Craigslist thing. I plan on, you know, still trying to get things from there, even though you, the human race, just continues to disappoint me. But uh, anyways, I gotta end this video because I don't think that fish are supposed to swim upside down. So uh, yeah, I should probably get on that. Bye.